Hello and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles and yes, we're still in that maze of tests. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get out of this place. Are we here. nearly there yet? <laughs> I'm David Knight, your dungeon master, and I'm joined by these persevering puzzle paragons. So say hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Hi. I would like to officially submit my application to Mensa. <laughs> <laughs> very qualified i'm very not qualified yeah after this just like yeah show them show them the working uh shall we solve this thing let's do it yes yeah really, let's cue really, the really, theme really tune. Nice. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and d20 Let's play d and You'll hang your character swaggers with daggers in each hand You've all discussed what you must, but even best lay plans Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blades don't fail your saves. No risk too great, no choice too bold. This is your story. No guts, no glory. Confront your fate with every roll. Every roll. Inside one who will pay the price, their chance of success for rest upon the dice. No risk too great, no choice too bold. This is no small rolls. So, working your way through the Wingthrop tests, you focused on how the cube like forge worked, and after inadvertently scolding the party by activating it too soon, you set to work deciding which of the various metals needed to be placed in which of the various hatches. Once the puzzle was complete, you were left with a large black sphere, and no idea what to do with it. After healing up, you moved into the last room that contained an obsidian slab and a message from the mysterious K that simply said, Defend yourself. With crossbow-wielding golems in each corner, trained on a set of goggles, you decided to take a short rest before tackling the danger. You all gathered tight on one side of the obsidian slab, and Enkidu's mage hand lifted the goggles, at which point the golems fired round after round of crossbow bolts at the spectral appendage. With a shatter from Gaius and the golems distracted, you all launched into attack. And that's where we're at. So, uh, can everybody remind me what it is that you all attacked with and then roll your damage? Uh, my darts. Chromatic orb. Firebolt. Shatter. <laughs> I am not attacking. Natural 20. Off to a good oh, start. Wait, David said he could just roll damage. He didn't say to roll. Oh, just damage. No, roll your attack. Roll no, your attack. Oh, damn it. <laughs> you definitely no, said roll listening. damage. I think I might have said roll damage, oh. but... <laughs> Can I roll 20 points of damage, please? Mm, not with a dart, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you, just to clarify, are you all... Because Gaius did attack one already, one golem in a corner. Are you all attacking that same one? I think, I think we are, so. Yeah. I think that was the plan. Yeah. It was all, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, cool, cool. Because I knew you were all attacking... The same target, just clarifying that it's the one that's already had damage. I rolled a natural two for an 11. <laughs> You're very distracted by the constant firing of arrows. Unnatural 25. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Because yeah. I usually can do an extra attack, can I have thrown two darts at once if Wendelin's ambidextrous? I'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah, being cheeky. Yeah, this is this is kind of a loose in, uh, initiative because obviously the golems are continually firing at Enkidu's mage hand floating in the space. So whilst none of them are targeting any of you, I'm going to let you sort of all take an action. Uh, they'll they'll fire another round of bolts at the hand, and then you can go again if you fancy and do another action. So yeah, what's all of the damage? Not because I missed. Oh, uh, I've got to do a save for the um... con save. That's a natural 20, I'm really sorry. Oh, disadvantage, disadvantage. That is a uh, 12. Yep, that does not succeed. Ooh, nice. Nine damage on a chromatic orb, please. Nice. Uh, no damage from Orin. How much damage from Gwendolyn? Pew, pew, 13 points of damage. Nice. And how much from Shatter? 
uh, 19 points of thunder damage. Ooh. Yeah. I wish I could, with my darts, be like, 180! <laughs> uh. So, with all of these um, spell effects and darts and things flying over into the uh, the golem in the corner, it's still active. I mean, this is a solid metal uh, thing, so it is, it's still going... You can see that, like, you know, there are quite a few cracks and quite a few markings now down it. So, like, the the, the action of, like, reloading the crossbow and lifting it up to fire again is not as smooth as it was, but unfortunately it is still firing. Oh, I have a question, actually. Hmm. Not to you, uh, mysterious man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> Why, well, it's I. Kay, it's Kay. Hey, <laughs> And Kiru, question. Why don't you get the goggles and hover them in between the two golems so they keep firing at each other? I was about to other? do that. Ooh. I had that thought. Oh. Yeah, between them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, do it, do Die. it. Um, yeah, I'll hover it. I'll hangle it in front of the one that's been hit the most. That is very clever. Oh. That is yeah. very clever. I like yeah. that a lot. I like that. Ooh, I like well. that a lot. Great minds, Dal. Yeah, big brain. Are you sure you're not a wing trap? Mm. Um, so, yeah, as you sort of move the uh, the mage hand back, yeah, the two sort of in the further corners behind the, uh, the obsidian slab do get a clearer shot of it. But then the two that you can see start, yeah, the, you can see that their arrows, their bolts are flying through the hand and start impaling each other. How much damage are they doing each time? Yeah. I'm going to minor illusion some popcorn. <laughs> you could just sit against the obsidian wall. I know, right? <laughs> Take another short rest, shall we? <laughs> Annoyingly, there still will be one that we have to like destroy. That's fine. We'll gang up on it and just like break it. So you all, um, yeah, you all pause for a brief moment uh, as you sort of watch these uh, these statues attacking each other. Uh, the one that you've already damaged after two rounds of crossbow bolts stops moving. <laughs> However, obviously it had fired two rounds back at the other uh, golem, so that now has four crossbow bolts sticking out of various points in its chest. It continues to fire at the the now immobile golem through the through the mage hand. Put it between two more golems, Enki do. Yeah, yeah. I just ro- I just rotate it clockwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me do a sort of quick quick bit of maths. Man. Over I mean, here, we can help it along a little Come bit. On, says Orin, adjusting his blowtorch, ready to just sort of. It could be like I, I can't hold this spell forever. <laughs> I'll give go- I'll give bardic inspiration to one of the golems. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? It's really, yeah, it's really trying it one. You can't smell what this rock is cooking. Hey. hey. Or is it metal? Um, and actually, again, as you sort of move it round clockwise, uh, after again two rounds of more of crossbow bolts the other golem that you can see powers down it stops working however the other two on the other side of the obsidian slab you can hear still continuing to fire as the mage hand is sort of just drifting as as far as you can just round the corner and again it's very impressive how they can shoot these arrows at the hand without touching the goggles at all the Mm. goggles are unscathed which means we definitely cannot put these on (laughs) until these columns <laughs> shut down. Well, hang on a minute. It's, is it just the two that are behind the wall now? Yeah, so putting it between the two. Yeah, do you want to get rid of those golems and then put the goggles on? Or do you okay, want to put sure. the goggles on while they're still alive? Well, sh- mm. kill the golems first or destroy them. Yeah, yeah. Might as well. It seems to be working. Mm. Go for it. Yeah, I'll just um, rotate it again. Can I have some of that popcorn? <laughs> yeah, I've got some fizzy drinks as well. <laughs> we like all peeking either side of the obsidian wall watching these two <laughs> go- golems like shoot at each other. Yeah, and then Kidu, obviously you'll have to slightly peek around the side just to yeah. move the mage hand into the, into position. Again, they, d- they don't seem to be firing at you at all. So whilst it is worrying to see like the force and the power of these these crossbow bolts flying across the rooms, you, you're actually pretty safe. So again, uh, once once the uh, the mage hand is is in position that they're they're hitting each other, it takes about two rounds of crossbow bolts, and the third golem powers down, leaving just one in the in the corner, continually firing at the at the at the goggles. I'll move it so the ma- the goggles aren't like facing us. Do you know what I mean? Like move it away, like just in case it goes in our direction. Shall we deal with this final golem? Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Oh, fire bolted again. I'll pick up the box of popcorn. <laughs> So the, the mage hand has moved so that it's... And then Kido's sort of like peeking around one end of the uh, the obsidian slab whilst everyone else has moved around the other. <laughs> <laughs> that way, guys. Are we rolling attacks? Yeah, yeah, if you want to fire some attacks at this thing. Yeah. Uh, non-natural 20. Yeah. Nice. That hits. Yeah. 
Oh, does it count as a surprise? Because it's not focused on... No, no, no. no unfortunately <laughs> not. No. <laughs> I think it knows we're here. I ro- How is that possible? I rolled three ones on my damage dice. Oh, my God. Oh. I literally rolled three ones. So three points of fire damage. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll add it in. Hey. It, it was a natural 20 as well, wasn't it? No, unnatural 20. Unnatural oh, sorry. 20. Unnatural. Oh, no, Unfortunate. Man. I'll add it on. 11 to hit. Just checking. 11 doesn't hit, unfortunately. Uh, fair enough. If I'm using my attack and my extra attack, my second attack is a 22. 22 does hit, yes. Uh, and Gaius, are you? Um, I'm not going to shatter, but I will um, do a bit quick bit of percussion on the obsidian wall. <laughs> and then the last one, I will smack it against the obsidian wall, and then it will reverberate and hit the other golem with a thunderclap, which will be nice. six points of thunder damage. Does it need to make a save? Constitution. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is just an 11. Takes that full six then. Ooh, <laughs> six points of damage. And what was your the damage? Five Gwendolyn? points of piercing damage from Gwendolyn's dart. Yeah. Nice. Cool. It's uh, still standing. So if you all want to do another round of attacks. Firebolt again. Uh, but again, it is very distracted. Can I shout boo at it to try and surprise it? <laughs> <laughs> Sneak attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turn into a rogue. Inspired by Orin, though, Juna, who was getting ready to cast Word of Radiance, is going to shout boo at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She wouldn't nice. say boo to a goose. Oh, wait, no, we don't have a goose. Uh, oh. Uh-oh. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. Aggie's still molten. <laughs> Um, 14 to hit. 14 doesn't hit, unfortunately. Um, constitution saving throw against Juno's boo! Ooh, that is a 18 yeah. for the constitution save. Yeah, it passes. Uh, one of my attacks was a natural one, but the other was a 10, so that's 15 to hit. 15 doesn't hit either. Oh, Ooh. man. Or rather, the uh, the Ooh. firebolt and the, the dart, they do seem to collide with this, with this statue golem, but yeah, it just doesn't... It just seems to bounce off of it. It doesn't seem to do any any apparent damage. Uh, Gaius, are you doing anything else? Gaius will slap again. (laughs) And smash it off with another uh, thunderclap. So, need constitution saving throw. I'll be honest, that that noise combined with the words smash that. (laughs) (laughs) Smash that. Amazing. (laughs) But yeah, sure, how much damage are you doing? Six points of damage. I'm consistent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it, it rolled really low as well. So, okay, cool. Another six points of damage. Um, can I ask, with a, with a saving throw, is the damage only halved if it says in the spell it's halved? Yeah. So if it's a cantrip, it doesn't so. half. Thank you, Ben. Mm-hmm. I think I've never been uns- unsuccessful with Word of Radiance, or I would have asked that question sooner. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. It's because you just emit Radiance, Vicky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not me, it's Juna. Yes, yeah, so I think most leveled spells do half that damage. I think most do, trip. as a general rule, I think. That's fair. But cantrips, if if they fail, they just fizzle into nothing. Scraping the barrel with spells. <laughs> yeah, this golem is continuing to fire at the at the goggles. So, firebolt! Again, you can keep going until until you've, you've, you've knocked it down. Natural 17! 28. No, 26. 26 Sorry. hits. Yeah! I roll better. 17 points of fire damage. Uh, and that is enough. Yeah. That's a total lie. 27 points of fire damage. Oh, that's wow. definitely enough then. <laughs> yes. oh, dust. Makes up my three ones on the previous round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the uh, with uh, with that last firebolt, sort of, especially that, that amount of damage, uh, colliding with it, you can see or parts just of it. just finished adjusting it. It slightly explodes in his face a bit more than he was just like, whoa, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, and it, you can see that because uh, of the way that the damage that you've done already and this crossbow bolt sticking out of it from the other golem, the uh, the flames do like just melt the end of the crossbow enough that it stops firing and like it's just juddering in the corner until it stops completely. Mage hand once again, freaking <laughs> genius spell. Yeah, so good. That was that was brilliant strategy as well. All of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was so yeah. clever. Yeah. Nicely done, team. That's working, Kidi. I did set this up thinking I could accidentally kill someone in this. <laughs> So I hope, I hope they think strategically. Oh, no. yeah. did. So good. But yeah, well, what are you all doing? Gwendolyn goes and collects all of her darts. The goggles come over and I just drop them in Aaron's hands. Oh, thank you. I look at the statues while I'm holding them. <laughs> just check that they're not coming to life again. Uh, you can see that uh, as you sort of look at each one, they are almost trying to, but they are so broken at this point. 
that like even any like little shudders put you on edge, but they're, they're not. They're out of action. Really tempted to repair them, but probably shouldn't. No. I'll put on the goggles. <laughs> As he does that, guy shouts, Bull! <laughs> <laughs> I jump. <laughs> As you put the goggles on, a diagram appears on the side of the obsidian slab. <gasps> Obviously, sort of, you try it, you lift the goggles up, put the goggles down, and like you can't see it at all, but you can see it through the goggles. What you can see is a golden box with a lightning bolt inside of it. Leading out of the box is a horizontal copper line that passes through a vertical red line and stops at a vertical silver line. That's all I see? That's all you see. Is it coming out of one side of the box, David? Or both sides of the box? Uh, just one side of the mm-hmm. of the box. I obviously explain what I'm seeing and draw a little diagram. <laughs> so I wonder if the box is the ending of the reaction and what we need to do is find the silver which would then connect to the rest of it. Well, hang on. So we got... Copper conducts electricity, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Did we use all the spools that we've found in various places? No, I don't think we did. Spools of what, sorry? We found wire earlier on in... The room with the walls? Yeah, what kind of wire? Uh, Was it copper wire? I don't know, actually. I think you took it with you as well, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I think so. we did. I think we got four clamps. Yeah, we wanted... So yeah, you pull it out and it is... It is uh, copper wire with two clamps. Two clamps, sorry. Okay, but what's like the battery? What's the uh, what's the box with the lightning bolt inside it? Well, hang on a minute. There's red. Would red be like life force, as in blood, and uh, silver be in metal? There's a silver plaque thing in the piston mm, room. Yeah. On the floor, and that had in the piston room. David, did it had li- it had little connectors, didn't it? In the piston yeah, room? it had two silver rods on either side of a silver sigil. If the gold box with the lightning in is the device in the horrible bubble sphere room, mm. and the red line is the red door mm. that leads into it, and the silver line is the thing in the piston room, that makes sense to me. Yeah. 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 Red. So the red room is the... Is the red line. So basically you have to pass the threshold of red to get to the battery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's gold on one side and red on the other. So Mm. it's not just red, but... Yeah. And there were connectors in that room, weren't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we give it a go? Yeah. Can we get out of this room? Are the doors open? Are you still wearing the goggles? Yes. Uh, then no, the doors are not unlocked. Okay, so if we put down the goggles and back at, back where they were, then maybe the no, room will I'm open up. No, I'm not going to take off the goggles. I'm sure that won't make any difference at all. I'll just keep them on the whole time. <laughs> I'll take off the goggles. <laughs> <laughs> Did we look on the other side of the wall just to check? Oh, good shout. Gwen, do you want to have a look? Okay. I'll pass you the goggles. Aww. Gwendolyn excitedly puts on the goggles and looks on the other side of the wall. Um... You actually see a completely different diagram on this side of the wall. Oh! <gasps> oh, well done, Gwen. Well, that's a good thing we checked. <laughs> that was... I was about to let you walk out of the room with only half the information. It says, don't do what I what, what you were just thinking of doing, otherwise you'll blow up the whole place. <laughs> so on this side of the, uh, the obsidian slab, what you see is a purple box with a black circle inside of it. And leading out from the black circle is a horizontal copper line that passes through a vertical blue line and stops at a vertical silver line. So, like the same as what you did before, but with the circle in the box? Yeah, that's right. Um, Yeah, it's it's a very similar diagram, except rather than having a gold box with a lightning bolt and the, the, the horizontal copper line coming from the box, you've got a purple box with a black circle in the middle of it, and the copper line leads to the black circle. And then comes out of that purple box... That's it. Uh, passes through a vertical blue line and stops at a vertical silver line. Gwendolyn has explained this to the group and, like Orin, tried to draw a diagram, but it's not as good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, black sphere, I think that might be your big ball, Gaius. Oh, yeah, that's mm. true. Hey, uh, Orin, you were telling me the other day about a thing like circuits. I didn't know what the word meant, but is, is this kind of what you meant? Yeah, like connecting up stuff with with wires and things. Like, yeah, link stuff together. Purple. What have we seen that's purple? Was the acid purple? Was it pink? Over the drawbridge. I can confirm that it was purple, yes. Mm. Mm. Well remembered. And if the acid is purple, then the blue door is between the purple and the silver. Yeah. Mm. Maybe the silver sigil, we haven't seen another silver sigil anywhere else. Maybe... That's the exit. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we have to tie the copper around this 
ball and chuck it into the acid. Mm. Yeah. yeah. There is... David, do I know about, like, electrolysis and stuff? Make an intelligence check. (laughs) (laughs) I know Ben does because I asked him this question a little while ago. Ben (laughs) discussed it with the DM, so I don't want to metagame this. Uh, That, just a plain intelligence? Um, Yeah, there's not really a science check, really, is there? So we'll just say, yeah, straight intelligence. Cool. 18. 18, yes, yeah. Um, Again, with with Orin's uh, history in engineering and sort of different arcane things. The fact he's played by Ben. And yep, yeah, it's playing by uh, <laughs> someone who is much more versed in that than I am. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, you are aware that that is a that is a thing. Okay, so there is a thing that sometimes, like, if you put like a metal like rod in a solution of a certain like type, you can actually make a circuit with that. Um, so that acid might act as like the solution that we need, and then, as you say, guy, we we tie this the the wire around uh, one end of this metal thing pop it in the solution that might act as sort of half of a well it might act as like an anode or a cathode uh, and then wire it up. <laughs> someone's <laughs> using his degree <laughs> <laughs> you say it then such a seductive tone there Oren. <laughs> <laughs> how do we get the mixture like how, how do we physically like move it i think we just put the ball in the acid from the look of the diagram yeah, i don't think we have to move it just sink the ball into yeah. it yeah yeah Pop it in. Roll that bad boy in. Yeah. We've got enough copper wire, haven't we? We got two, we got had two cables of copper, didn't we? Anybody remember? Yeah, we had two two. We got a uh, hundred and fifty feet of copper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that should be enough, right? Yeah. Oh, we had four clamps, so we can cut it. I suppose two clamps. Two clamps. Oh, yeah. Which... Oh, but we can tie it. Maybe. Did I say the two? rooms are each about sixty foot, aren't they? Yeah, so, sixty foot. We're trying to get it from the silver thing right over to the machine that's 60 120 oh no, do you know what i keep saying two clamps but you are all correct it is four clamps i'm very sorry oh. it is four clamps i should read my own notes so the silver <laughs> bit is the middle of the circuit essentially well it's not really a circuit as such but it's the middle of the um uh it's where one diagram meets the other yeah. essentially yeah. isn't it yeah. yeah what we're trying to power up would that be the right words or yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> should we try it then i think yeah. so let's do yeah. it Okay, right. We proceed to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, are you all working on different parts separately or are you just going to work through each section of it sort of together? I like think staying maybe as a group, we basically. should stay as a group. <laughs> Coming from you, Miss Zephyl. Yeah. Well, yeah. What a suggestion. Yeah. What a suggestion. Just in case the door's shut and we have to do something all over again. Yeah. Gwendolyn just kind of whispers to uh, Juno, like, maybe we should not let Engidu go into the other room uh with all the creatures it might yes not, definitely yes um just for now yeah actually maybe we should split up <laughs> why don't we take care of the battery room and um why don't you deal with the with the ball and the acid okay yeah okay right okay we proceed to do so um uh, cool so as you uh, each head off through the doors uh gaius orin and enkidu as you enter through a blue door into the room with the uh, the acid pit. You cross over a drawbridge. Can one of you make a sleight of hand check, please, to try and tie the copper yes, please. wire around the this this ball? Fifteen. Fifteen. Brilliant. Just out of interest, uh, were we able to take the goggles out of the room, or if we try and take the goggles out of the room, does the door not? They have to be returned to the table as a good check, though. I reluctantly return the goggles to the table. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, and Kidu sits down, gets the copper wire, starts tying it as much as he can around this ball. Who's going to deal with the other end of it? I suppose, Orin, if you've seen the... Um... Oh, if someone needs to go into the, the silver plate, I'll head yeah. there. Well, Enkidu's tying the other end on. And I believe the way you left it is that the blue and red doors were open anyway. Oh, isn't that good? We did. That is. It was very nifty. So you don't have to worry about reordering the doors. Those two are already accessible. So you, yeah, you move through and you start tying the end of it to a clamp and the clamp onto the the, the metal rod there. Juna and Gwendolyn, you actually realise as you reach that other room that one of the cables is long enough by itself. Whilst uh, you've got two, you've got one going to a green door to keep it open and one to the gold door to keep it open. Uh, you realise actually as long as the gold door is open, you can use the other one and pass that through to Orin as well. Oh, so it doesn't matter if the green door shuts is what you're saying. Exactly. Oh, that's a bit handy. Yeah. So you um, yeah, you start passing that through the pistons uh, toward Orin and that just leaves somebody to roll the, the sphere into the acid. Okay. Well, I'm here, so I guess I don't, I don't mind doing it. Don't get splashed. <laughs> use your shield. <laughs> Gwendolyn shouts from across all the way from the sphere room. <laughs> shield, shield. Not the new one I bought you. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. 
wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you uh, edge up uh, to the acid and like roll this thing, this this big black sphere into it, uh, almost straight away there is a crackling of energy uh, and lightning around this ball as it's like fizzing in the acid. And you and Gaius have to step out of the way as the copper wire itself becomes electrified and you can see little sparks like dancing along it. Orin sat at the uh, silver plate. Can you make a dexterity saving throw, please? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I did not roll well, guys. Oh, That's no. a five. Oh, no. <laughs> cool. I'll let you know what happens when uh, anybody goes to look at you. Orin disappears. <gasps> yeah, uh-huh. everyone, as you're stood separated in the uh, in the two rooms. How's it going in there, Orin? Orin? Orin, is anything happening? I mean, he's quiet, but he's not usually that quiet. Hey, buddy, where are you? Gwendolyn runs to the centre to try and find Orin. Ah, oh, mm. boy. And it takes a it takes a moment to squeeze through, and you see that the uh, the silver sigil, the little crawl space, has opened up into a chute. <gasps> uh, oh my gosh! Yes, and guy will jump down. <laughs> yeah, I'm jumping down that chute. If it's taken Orin, we yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So as you all sort of go one after the other, uh, Orin. As you were completely unexpecting that, uh, you do take six points of bludgeoning damage there. as you sort of bounce down this chute ow, rather ow, than ow, sliding ow, down ow, it. Ow, ow. You're about mm. to take more bludgeoning damage in a second. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's gonna land on top of you. Yeah. And as you can hear everybody's voices like echoing down this slide after you, mm. you do uh, think to move out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna have one last tra- check for K before I slid down, but. Oh yeah, I mean, you're welcome to, Enkidu. As sort of everybody else has said they've dived yeah. down. You can yeah. do a quick check just there. Yeah, I feel like this is the end of this part of this maze. Just in case he left, I see nothing. What? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you is so I was blind. trying to read whether that was good no, or not, like high or low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a two, so that means it's a one. Whoa. <laughs> so oh, an what? unnatural okay. one. I can imagine <laughs> almost as you're, uh, as you're like, everyone has just like sort of jumped down this slide, this chute. You're like, oh, maybe there's like something written just on the like inside of it. And you stick your head down and just lose your grip. And just <laughs> 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 so so enkidu has gone down head first. Yeah. Everyone else came down feet first. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you come down head first? <laughs> I was uh, looking for clues. <laughs> <laughs> You all find yourselves in a very small room. Mm. It's sort of 10 foot by 10 foot. Mm. still brass. They've got a style. They like to stick to it. There are um, padded benches along opposite walls. And in the center of the room is a, a long table that uh, has got various uh, tools and potions all clearly marked um, on it. The, uh, the potions... All say healing. Uh, and on the opposite wall to the shoot's entrance are the words, Congratulations, you have completed your first test. If you require urgent medical assistance, please use the supplied materials to recuperate here. Erida will join you in 12 hours. There's a, a countdown underneath it. First oh. test. Um, um, Erida. Oh, wow. Um... Erida? Erida is written in capital letters as well, so it really stands out. Oh, hang oh, on. No. Oh, Erida, sorry. I Erida was not... Wingthrop. <laughs> she was the oh, first member of the... Yeah, yeah. Gizordium. How would she read? She's warforged. Um, no. She... 12 <laughs> hours. That's such a weird time. 12 hours. Well, you drink the potions, it knocks you the fuck out. <laughs> you wake up dead. Also, that, <laughs> like, that's there. the first test. Erida will That's the you. first test. It took two months. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Oh gosh! It took two months. Oh. <laughs> two months. Oh. Well, the listeners would be like, "It's been two months." <laughs> I mean, for them, yeah. The next, ch- the next test might be just something really simple, like an arithmetic paper, guys. Well, the next test is drinking these bottles. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is the next. Yeah. Um, Gwendolyn wants to go and investigate the words. Mm-hmm. They're written in like blue arcane writing like the uh the countdown there is a, a sort of a countdown underneath them that is ticking away and it's a similar blue writing to the same that appeared on the golem's face in Ferrisine's courtyard mm. uh, a similar sort of styling does this remind anybody else of the uh the face we saw in in Ferrisine's courtyard same sort of glowy oh yeah yeah did Erida con- 
create these trials for future Winthrops? Yeah. Um, a little off topic, but not quite. Uh, sorry, no, I'm, I'm Vicky asking this on behalf of Gina. The countdown, does mm. it in any way, shape or form resemble the countdown that we saw in Kral's cave to get to the oh. mirrors? No. Ooh. Okay. No, it is this uh, feels more like a clock okay. than something terrifying like that. No, <laughs> I think I'm a little bit concerned that we are in a position where we are not going to now be like observers. We're not going to be like espionage <laughs> people who are like watching from afar what the Wingthrops are up to. We are actually going to be speaking to the head honcho herself. If she's still alive. Well, the writing suggests so. But she might have set this up as a thing when she was alive, and it's just still being used. Well, what we can probably guarantee is that in 12 hours, we're going to find out. Yeah, I think that's a <laughs> fair assessment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you have a legitimate cover, though? Yeah. Uh, two of you are Wingthrops. Yeah. Look over a guy. I mean, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. He's kind of weird. I'm going to just like hold Oren's face and just be like looking at him really intensely. <laughs> do I see any family resemblance? <laughs> <laughs> that's what's really nice I mean, make a, you've known him for, for how long? <laughs> make an insight check. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Roll for family tree. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nature check, right? A tree check. Insight. That's going to be nine. Nine. It doesn't look oh. like anything like your siblings. No. I look intently at that guy. I mean, you're welcome to make a check as well. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what you... Half his face is covered with the mask. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, right? Uh, insight. That's a 17. 17. There is something about his cheeks, his cheekbones, similar. <laughs> Stare at his cheeks. There's something about the shape of his lips that's not too different from your own. Yeah. If you squinted, you could see it. Uh, maybe. Maybe maybe very, very, very distant relatives. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was just a glitch or like a... You you, you used that word the other day. Like if, if, if there's like a malfunction in one of your like little machines or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's glitching, yeah. It's a big family, I guess, at this point. Yours? I don't know. I mean, the wing throps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's I true. I mean, ours. They said they, you know, span far and wide. And also there's... All of these wing thrups that end up running away or get chucked out because they're not good enough. Yeah, because I failed the test. Or yeah, I don't know who my dad is. That's something. I've just got his middle name. That's all. Well, I've got his name as my middle name. Oh, what's your middle name? Findigolf. 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 Yeah. Nice. Gaius Fendigolf. The Mars Bard. <laughs> what's your surname? Julius. Gaius. Gaius Fendigolf. Julius. Julius. The last bar. Mm. That's a lot of letters. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It is. It is, but it's fabulous, like me. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, besides the point, um, yeah, so I don't know, maybe he's related to me somehow through my dad's side? Uh, through Findergolf's side? But yeah, anyway, like, ugh, I don't know. David, have I ever heard of any Findergolfs or Juliuses? Uh, just gonna say a flat no. Yep, that's fine. Unfortunately, from your, <laughs> nope, from your nope, background. Nope. nope. I wasn't expecting to have. No. Wow. It could be. We just don't know, do we? Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. Hello there, Twain Tiders. I'm rocking the sultry tones of a cold for today's bit in the middle, so hopefully I don't send you to sleep. But if I do, sweet dreams. Now, if you haven't already, do go and check out our bonus content. You'll see it available in your podcast feed. There's Superfan Chats, a show where some of our marvellous super Super fans get together and recap recent episodes whilst discussing their fan theories. Very useful if you want a bit of a refresher on the last few episodes. I must say they sum up going through the maze brilliantly. We also have No Small Questions, where members of the cast answer your questions about the characters, our story and their love for D&D. This month, it's time to quiz Daryl and Vicky. So start deciding on what you want to ask them about Juna and Enkidu. We'll be recording on the 17th of June at 8pm BST, so be sure to get your questions to us by then. As usual, Patreons will be invited to join us live in the Zoom. So if you want to join in the fun, head to patreon.com forward slash no small roles to find out more. 
Talking of Patreon, we have a new supporter. Big thanks and big rolls to Tony K. We hope you enjoy your extra No Small Rolls content. Subscribing to Patreon is one way to get more No Small Rolls love in your life. Another is to check us out when we guest on other shows. Coming up on the 9th of June, Daryl, David and I join One in 20 for their one-shot adventure, An Icy Rescue. We had a lovely time recording with the 1 in 20 crew, so go and check out our game with them. You'll find a link to their YouTube page in our show notes, and if you want to follow them on social media, they are at 1 in 20 TTG. And if you want to see members of the No Small Roles cast in real life, you can. By coming to see the shows we are in this summer. For some silliness, shenanigans and Shakespeare, Open Bar Theatre will be touring the south of England with Love's Labour's Lost and As You Like It. And if you're looking for a show for the whole family to enjoy, check out the magical Dragons and Mythical Beasts. Links to tickets and tour dates for all three of these productions can be found in the show notes and on our social media. Which you probably know by now, but just in case, we are at No Small Roles on Twitter and Instagram. You can find us on Facebook by searching No Small Roles, and you can join us on Discord by following the link in the show notes. Oh, there's so much in the show notes today. We were absolutely thrilled to see a new review this week oh it makes us so happy from hashtag dwindling fabulosa for life who else could that be but the amazing jeremy cobb so big shout out to jeremy and of course his awesome podcast three black halflings if you haven't checked them out yet then obviously you just don't listen to me so go check them out thank you jeremy we are absolutely honored to be one of the podcasts you listen to regularly that makes us very happy but you know what's going to make you happy dear twain tide loving folks me saying that's all from me for now let's get you back to the story david do these uh potions that are in the room do they look like the same sort of consistency color as our uh healing potion yeah 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 they look identical same smell uh yeah you pop one open give both uh, like your one and that one a, a whiff smells similar what do you guys think these legit yeah probably i can't imagine they'd want to get you here to then just poison you would they that would seem counterproductive you've passed the tests now drink poison yeah that's true yeah, right. uh so are we just gonna like relax here for 12 hours Maybe. what are all these tools as well you said there were tools on the table uh yeah there are uh, various uh some of them look more surgical surgical yep some of them look a little bit more for one for better description the kind of tools you'd use to fix your own gadgets Orin. you've you have similar tools about like tinkers you, tools sort of stuff. tinkers tools exactly yeah some like the more basic smithing tools we're just sitting around yeah and there's nothing else in the room there's nothing else in the room the two padded benches they look comfortable enough to sleep on we have found the green room <laughs> <laughs> i guess healing potions are delicious then um this is the thing i see uh i might just borrow these tools <laughs> yeah, use them. Sure. And rest? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think June is already sort of plonked down on the sofa, sort of with her head bobbing from side to side. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what do you all do for the next 12 hours? Shall we take a watch each and have yeah. a nice rest up? So, yeah, don't feel secure enough not to have people on watch. Yeah. No yeah. way. They're tools, David. Yeah, yeah. I want to know about the tools as well. I mean, are they, is it literally like a whole set of Smith's tools and like a whole set of tinkering tools or is it just sort of bits and pieces or? Bits and pieces. Um, rather annoyingly, there doesn't seem to be a full set of anything that you can nab. But there's, there's things that you could augment your own tools with already. And the more you sort of consider it all, yeah, you come to the conclusion that these are here to fix anything that people have broken maybe uh, through you. the tests. Yeah. Okay. It's like a little temporary workbench almost. Hmm. Well, let's have a rest then. Um, I've got a teapot uh, to repair. I don't mind taking the first watch. I wouldn't mind having a quick look at a couple of stuff. Yeah, I don't mind sitting up to start with. Yeah. I wouldn't mind, DM, just like having a look around at like, is there just a way we could open a door and walk out? Uh, make an investigation check as you're sort of looking around whilst everyone's having a little rest. Ooh, what was it, investigation? Mm-hmm. 
unnatural 21. <laughs> Ooh, nice. <laughs> so what you do realize, uh, first of all, as you're sort of exploring, that there does seem to be a kind of vibration and a grinding noise just outside of the room. And on the wall with the writing, uh, it doesn't seem to be as uh, the seams, the seams, the corners that connect the, the walls and the floors together don't seem to be as tight around that wall. So you can imagine that that entire thing can open. That you can't see a way to do it, especially even with a 21. It, like, and you push it and it doesn't feel like it can move. But you can imagine that that entire wall can move. Cool. I think, I think we're in here, Orin, aren't we, till, till whatever happens, happens. I think so. I just was wondering if this is something we could have just walked away from, but we can't. I think we're in it now. We're in it now, yes. Yeah, I think one way or another we're going to see who turns up in 11 yeah. hours. 47 minutes, 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Just so we're, we're clear, because I'm just curious, is this some sort of like trick in that this is the second test to show initiative? You have to use these tools to get out of the room? Because why would they leave the tools here? Well, I think they've left the tools here because if you've brought in your contraptions and stuff and they've got a bit busted up, he looks at Aggie, <laughs> <laughs> during the first part of the test, they're giving you a chance to make some repairs. Uh, okay. Health potions to repair you. Tools to repair your your toys. And would these uh, potions recover strength that you can't recover from resting for 12 hours? That doesn't make sense. I suppose if you came in really injured and just need a quick pick-me-up before a nap. Oh, yeah, if you were really, really... Like if, I don't know, you were clumsy and you hadn't noticed like a hole open up in the floor, just for example, and then you fell through it. I mean, just as a, for instance, <laughs> I don't know anyone that would do that. But, yeah. you know, if, if that had happened, maybe you'd want something. Well, it's really good that that didn't happen to any of us. Yeah. I would laugh for days if that had happened to one of us. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit the hay then in that case. Yeah. yeah. Before Enkidu turns in. How many benches? Four, did you say? Uh, two, two they're, but they're, they're about 10 feet long yeah. each. So there is sort of space for, for two people to, sort of to, to lie down on. Can I investigate them? Just have a look, see if there's any scratchings or anything on them. Absolutely. They're mimics. I love the paranoia. <laughs> the benches eat you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a six. No, there's no, uh, there's no messages from Kay in this room. Doesn't seem anything odd or out of place or dangerous about these things. They're just cushioned, padded benches. All right. Is there anything on the table that I could use to cast Find Familiar? <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately okay. not. There's no herbs and things. Okay. So not everything can be, like, got back that was lost in this cube. That's interesting. Oh. She says with a laugh. I don't know if they were expecting sorcerers to be in here so much. Mm, maybe. I think you might be a surprise. Oh, so, Orin, how are you feeling about all of this? Um, I'm kind of, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit, well, now we're here, and it turns out that Guy and me are related to them in some way. I'm kind of. I'm kind of excited to know a bit more now. I mean, never mind what Scholar Heron Ilwin wanted us to do. Like, who knows what, like, what else we might find out, like, about, well, about us. About me and... Yeah. Kai. Yeah. I guess I set out to try and find out where I was from, and I thought I might find that up much further north, but we might have stumbled into finding out something a bit further south than I was expecting. Yeah. Be kind of nice to know. That's good to know. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of fascinating. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are you uh, feeling what, about? What, 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 sorry. No. You what? I no. I I yeah. I I, I, do, I don't feel right about those creatures no. in the bubbles, and um, I think at some point we're going to need to uh to get to the bottom of that, aren't we? And yeah, and and find out what's happening. It does make me feel uneasy about these and she points to the caddy <laughs> oh yeah the battery actually that's a good point should we yeah. just have a quick look at them just check that they're still okay in there well the others yeah. are asleep i mean they know about them now anyway yeah. but uh yeah yes have a look so yeah we qu will quickly like take them out there yeah, they seem they seem as you've as you've left them they don't seem damaged in any way mm. i wonder mm, no maybe i should uh also, actually, I'm going to have a little look at this as well. Can I also pull out the detect, uh, sorry, dispel magic wand and just sort of suss out if I can yes. tell anything about its properties as well, if I sort of have a play with it for a few minutes as well. I've not got identify or anything. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, you constructed it, so it. What? I'm, what? What? What do what I want, want to know, know about? Um, <laughs> it casts a spell magic. Does it have a set number of charges? Does it? Um, oh, that kind does of it thing. Oh, I see. Recharge? I see. I see, I see. Does it? Uh, yeah. So you have a quick look at it, uh, and you reckon you could probably. With that small battery, cast it three times before it would have to like recharge itself a little bit again. Good to know. Yeah, I, I know what you mean about the creatures and things. I guess I hadn't really been thinking about it till Enkidu sort of pointed it out. Mm. I think I got a bit carried away. Yeah, with everything well, we else. were in there for a reason, you know. It's uh, easily done. But I think uh, I, I think you're right. We sort of we're in it now, aren't we? Yeah, and maybe we can do something about the creatures and um, I feel a bit weird about using the batteries and stuff now, but yeah, maybe there's a way we can swap them out for something else. I've, I'm going to think on it, but I've had a couple of ideas. Okay. Um, June is going to take herself off. I haven't have ID. Um, mm. What I want to do is message Ginger. Yeah. Weirdly, I have one third level spell slot left. I don't know mm-hmm. how that even happened to just message if she can, I think she can. I don't know where we are. Um, and just, I don't think I've said this before, but correct me if I haven't, I've just forgotten. Um, just to say, what do you think about these Winthrop and this Erida Winthrop? P.S. No messages left after this. Um, as you cast the spell, you can feel yourself sort of sending these words out, but you also very definitely feel like they do not connect. Oh, oh God. Well, this is a weird wood, isn't it? That we're in mm. forests. Yeah. yeah, there's a barrier around us above yeah. ground. You right, Juno? I just tried to send a message and it's not going. And that's weird. Oh. Um well yeah, we might be insulated here where we are. Yeah. It doesn't feel nice. No. <laughs> I tell you that. A bit like that machine that uh that was in that shed. That anti magic machine. Yeah. Can I just hold Orin's hand and cast Guidance to see if that works? To see if any ma- like magic is working? Oh yeah, that seems to work. Huh, that's weird. Do you feel that, Orin? Yeah. Yeah, not all magic, just... I feel warm like a cup of tea. <laughs> just it stops it leaving out the perimeter. Yeah, it rather does. Than within here. Mm. Good to know. We are, we are in here. Yeah. Until we're told to leave. Until that thing counts down. Oh, Orin... I've not felt like this before. It's not very nice. Yeah. <laughs> As the two of you um, sort of continue your watch, continue chatting away, who's taking next watch? I will. Mm-hmm. I will. Gaius and Gwendolyn? Yeah, you sort of tap Orin and Juno out and the two of you uh, sort of stretch yourselves a little bit, pace around again. It's not it's not that large a room, so it's, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable. You get to know the walls very well over the 12 hours. Are you chatting about anything or are you just sort of working on your own little things? Gaius is working on his loot quite intensely not looking at Gwendolyn <laughs> you know we're going to have to talk about your sister at some point his shoulders like tense up a little bit still not looking I, the name Treya has it's been ringing around in my head it's a bit frosty uh, but I feel like we've come into contact with that name uh, when we were at Berrien Fields, there was a note from the Hex. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my sister's got some leeway when it comes to, uh, things underground and criminal. So it runs in the family, and, uh, yeah, I'd rather not get a involved in anything to do with her really when you say has some leeway and you said your mother was the head of some important things it you mean like the boss um yeah uh and he's going to like grimace as he admitted that and he'll just go yeah um he'll look at the everyone else sleeping and just Okay, listen. The thing is, I trust you, Gwen. And I trust these guys here, but I don't want to tell them something that could be dangerous. I don't want to tell you something that could be dangerous, okay? 
And the reason why I'm not keen to share my family is because I'm scared of them. I wasn't scared of my mom. My mom's dead, obviously. But I'm scared of my sister and my two brothers. Are they the ones that um, that that hurt you? Yeah. Yeah. This is, um, he takes the mask off. They say family is supposed to protect you, you know. But, uh, yeah, this was their doing. Mom was in charge, and she was really good at her job. And she, you know, she was, you know, a person to be feared, a person to be respected. She was, you know, considered, like, godmother to, like, loads of people. And, um, I was her favorite. And I was kept out of the family business. You know, I was tutored. I was, uh, encouraged in all things arts. And my brothers and sisters, they never trusted or liked the fact that I was mom's favorite. And, and then one day I, one day I find myself in an alleyway with my brother telling me that mom's dead and that the hex are involved and that they killed mom and they wanted me out of the picture then and then he stabbed me I looked down and I just saw his hand in my belly red blood running down his hands and the weirdest thing was that when he pulled it out he did it again and again and again and again and again and again and he slashed my face, slashed me, and told me that's what my other brother and sister, what my siblings wanted. Kicked me into the sewers, and I got washed up outside of civilization. (laughs) And I, you know, Oren says he's looking for something, but I'm looking away from something. I want to get away. And if they ever find out that I'm alive, I used to be scared for me, but now I'm scared for all of you. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Gwendolyn puts her arms around him and just gives him a really gentle hug if he allows her. Yeah, he does. I'm so sorry, Guy. It's okay. It's okay. You've got us now. And hopefully we can be a family to you and I I do think you should tell the others when you feel ready because uh, I know that each and every one of them will be on your side especially against the Hex Can I tell you the biggest secret that I've got, Gwen? Of course Is that I'm not just running away I think from them I've been running away from myself and from an idea that's been in my head for a while now This happened, you know, only like a year or so ago. And the idea that I've been running from and, you know, lying to myself about is that I don't think the Hex killed my mom. And he will just clench his fist and not say another word because he doesn't want to say what he thinks. Gwendolyn understands what he thinks. And she holds him tighter. We're going to protect you guys. And then he just sinks into her hug like melted butter. Just have a really big long hug in silence. Yeah, with that uh, sort of the revelation shared between the two of you, it is quite a, a comforting atmosphere afterwards. It's also not tense. But whilst you don't necessarily want to talk about that anymore, there is that, that big old elephant in the room. But time passes, you sort of both busy yourselves with other things uh, and eventually sort of push Enkidu awake to just take the last bit of the watch. As the two of you rest up, and Kidu, are you doing anything with your with your last? Sort of by this point, it's it's probably about two hours left of the waiting. Um, let's have a little inside check. Love that it's called the inside check. Inside yeah. Check. <laughs> so yeah. Good. Roll a roll a d twenty. Natural twenty. <gasps> oh my days! Oh yes. <laughs> said the words natural at the start of an inside check and everyone winces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a good one. Uh, as you sort of 
have this moment of peace mm -hmm. and especially everything that you've seen and been through in these tests as you reach inside to make a connection with anybody in there mm. who is it specifically that you want to speak to uh gilgamesh yes 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 <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> That was what I was hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gilgamesh fan right here. Yep. I can imagine that you're almost like perched at the end of the shoot because the beds, the, the the benches are taken up. Yeah. Um, and you're sort of you're just taking a moment to yourself, sat there like half meditating, but not quite fully sat on the floor. Mm. And you just look up, and he is stood at the end of the table. Wow. Obviously, he's not popped up in quite a while. So, what does he look like mm. for everybody? Um. So he's he's quite tall, slim build, um, half elf. He's got like tan brown skin, um, long, um, straight black hair, no facial hair, dark eyes. Yeah, he's quite, he's quite, quite sure, sure of himself. Very confident air about him. He looks around a little bit, looks at his hands, looks up at you, just again very assuredly, strolls around the table, like lifts you up by the shoulders, and just gives you a massive hug. Oh man! <laughs> and he just holds you there for a moment. Yeah. Before sort of like coming back, holding your shoulders, looking you d dead in the eye. Hmm. He's like, how are we? I think, I think, and like, you know, he, he sniffs a bit like, yeah, hold, holding it together. But yeah, I think, I think we're all right. Also, how am I here? <laughs> I haven't a clue. I'm still just shooting in the dark and then things happen. Well, it's good to know it can happen. Yeah, great to know it happens. How do you feel? Ah. Uh, Normal. Well, you're solid for one. Yes, very solid. Uh, don't know how long I'm going to be out here, but I feel like I'm. This feels fine. Oh, how do I look? You look. You're great. To be honest, impeccable. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> the thing about resting inside of your head, Kai, is gives you a lot of time to properly recuperate and work on yourself because there's not much else to do in there. Yeah. So this is quite nice. <laughs> He sort of almost like struts around the room a little bit. Mm. <laughs> right. What's the plan then? What's the plan? Well, I guess we've got to confirm a few things. I think we're going to meet Eredin Wingthrop. Someone who crafted and is responsible for why things are the way they are now. Hmm. And get a few answers from her. Why have they written it in capitals? I don't think it's her as I imagine everyone thinks it is. No. It will be her, but not her. It's like, I'm not expecting a full flesh and blood. This is Eredin Wingthrop from 400 years past, you know? Not like Crow. Not like Crow, I don't think. No way. I think he's mm. in that case to himself, but I, in her own way, she's preserved some part of herself. I don't know how. Me either. I have a question about the future, the far future, when we're all back to, you know, all of you are flesh and blood again, and we are free to do whatever we want. What do you want to do? He sort of pauses, stares at the wall a little bit longer. Turns around and says, Well, the throne's empty now, isn't it? Yes, it is. And we should probably keep it empty until we're ready. And that's the plan. I'm happy for that. And the plan hasn't changed. You get us out. Yeah. We claim the throne. We sort this country out. Yeah. What about cleanup duty on the way? How do you mean? Well, it's going to take a long time for me to figure out how to get you all back. There's going to be obstacles. Well, I don't like the sound of that burying. No. Nope. So feel free to disrupt him as much as you like. Yeah. And uh, who's the other one? Time and Prevost. Hmm. Big of a mystery here. I'd say try and find a way to contact him. Yeah, I thought as much. That'd be the thing. Yeah. From what I heard, inside of you, he doesn't seem to want the monarchy at all. No, he wants to dissolve it, replace it with something else. Sounds interesting. Well, perhaps if we can keep those two butting heads, yeah. and neither of them taking the throne, then once once we've solved this, yeah, then we can... And he vanishes. Mm. <sighs> and he looks around quickly <laughs> at the others, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was more than enough more than enough as you sort of sit there thinking about that even that brief conversation time comes around everybody else wakes up you all set about have a little bit of food and sort of eat some of your rations whilst you're waiting I power up Aggie 3 by the way who I worked on last night Mark 3 Mark 3 So yeah as uh, Aggie 3 makes her appearance <laughs> uh, and everybody's eating you watch as the the timer gets to the last minute and it counts down to the last 30 seconds to the last 10 and as it hits zero the words disappear there is a grinding that reverberates under all of you and the entire wall just lifts up slowly to reveal 
a grand hall of dark stone floors and brass panelling across each of the walls in tessellating triangles. There are corridors branching off of this hall in different directions. There's a spiral staircase in the centre of it that winds its way up to uh, raised platforms of copper-coloured railings decorated with cogs and gears. And moving through all of this space uh, are a number of faceless golems back and forth, carrying boxes, carrying different materials. They don't seem to be interacting with each other. They're on very set paths, but they're crisscrossing. And sort of stepping out of one of the corridors, moving directly toward you, is a, a woman, sort of mid-30s maybe, tan skin, green almond-shaped eyes, a black bob haircut in sort of a pinafore of sorts. She walks forward. She says... Hello, my name is Erida. Welcome to the Wingthrop Workshop. Hi, greetings. Does she look like a human? Or like, or like a humanoid? Or does she... Make an insight check. Yeah. Can, we, can you get advantage on that? We're, we're all looking all at her. Yeah. Looking into that as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for the advantage. That's a natural 20 for a 22. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oren clocks it, shoots one look at everybody else, and everyone's like... Yeah, this woman is a walking prosthetic. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hello. Well done for passing your first test. You have now been granted the rank of Recruit. That gives you access to wand production, applied med tech, and battery storage, as well as your own personal studios. Trespassing elsewhere will result in termination. Removing any designs or articles from the workshop, without a commander's permission, will also result in termination. You have been identified as the following. Gaius Vindegolf van der Kasteling, the Masked Bard. Orin Mirathquil, Mosquito, Volus Hemlock. Gwendolyn Lydia Marcus Rose, Carhilda. Enkidu Kai, Relicta, Mazoku. Juna Septhor. Is this correct? And that's where we're in the episode. What? Oh, oh my gosh! My gosh. Oh. Oh. That is a oh, lot of names, gosh. guys. What? Oh my That's gosh. Lot. Oh my gosh. Oh. Those name drops. <laughs> I need to listen wow. back to all those names immediately. Oh my gosh. That yeah. Delicious. <laughs> I know that is a slightly names? shorter episode, but that was rich. I... Oh my gosh. it's too good a moment not to end on. That was Are so they sweet. everyone's full names? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, Gaius oh. lied, to... really? lied about his full name. Yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. His, his family. His, you said yeah. it, and I was like, "Nah, I'm, I'm not gonna let that slide. I'm not gonna change this." Yeah. <laughs> you flower plucker, you. <laughs> Such a flower plucker. You have been listening to David Knight as your dungeon master, Ben Galpin as Orin, Chris Watts as Gaius, Daryl Bailey as N. Kidu. Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn and Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe and follow us on all social media. Thank you for listening to No Small Role.